Alright guys, welcome to your 40th Intermediate Java tutorial, and now that you're done creating the GUI, or the constructor, the next thing that you need to do is pretty much set up your application, pretty much the background, housekeeping, boring, setup stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and set up and run the server because that's what this method is going to do. Again, this is going to get called once your GUI is done being created. So what you need to do is create a method called public void start running. I think that's an appropriately named method. Now we're going to want to put all this in a try catch statement. So let me go ahead and do that right now. So cry, try or cry once we get some errors. Catch and exception I O. I hate typing this freaking catch stuff. I hate catching because that means we mess something up if this happens. So I O exception. What happens when we mess up? Just go ahead and print stack trace so we can see how we messed up. And we're getting an error right here because we didn't type anything into the try statement yet. So let's go ahead and take care of that right now. So again, try catch statement just so you know whenever we mess something up we can see what we did wrong but hopefully we don't mess something up so the first thing we need to do is we need to set up the server and basically give it a port number and I'll explain to you guys what that means in a second but you know how I created this variable right here and I said you know don't worry about it if you guys don't understand what it does right now you'll, stand, you'll understand it later on well guys the time has come we now have to tackle it unfortunately so go ahead and first thing you need to do is set your variable equal to new server socket and we're gonna throw two numbers in here the first one six seven eight nine that's pretty much just a dummy number just for testing purposes but don't forget it and the second one is 100 so what does this do right here well remember like I said this program or these set of tutorials that I'm going to be teaching you guys is pretty much a two part program. One of the programs is going to sit on a public server that is going to be my server and I'm going to be sitting in it, wait for people to connect to me and the other part of the program is one that you guys can run. Pretty much um, you know, one that you can put on your computer and connect to that server so once we're connected we can have a conversation with each other. Now if you never work with servers before or don't understand what a port number is, I'll tell you guys. A server is basically like any other computer except that a lot of people can access it. Now go ahead and look at the computer that you're looking at right now. It doesn't only have one application on it. You may have, you know, Google Chrome, you probably have Eclipse on it, you might have Photoshop, um, you know, Microsoft Word, a bunch of different applications. So whenever you connect to my server, you're going to say, okay, where is the application that I'm looking for? Where is that instant messaging application? Well, we actually stick this program at a certain port, and the port that I'm just going to use is 6789. You can name it, um, you can give it any port number that you want, but basically, whenever your boat comes through your stream and it connects to my server, it's going to be looking where to dock. Basically, where is that program? Well, it's at port 6789. And guys, I'm not making that up when I say port number. The technical term is actually port number. Basically, where do you want to connect? Or where is this application? Now, this number after this, maybe it says it right here. If I highlight server socket. Yep, int port and int backlog. Now, the backlog is basically saying, okay, how many people can wait to pretty much access this instant messenger because obviously this is going to be a very popular program probably more popular than Photoshop because you know I'm creating it how awesome is that so we don't want you know millions of millions of people waiting to chat with me I only want a limited amount of people because if there's too many people then you know my server is going to crash so I'm going to say okay only a hundred people are allowed to sit and wait at my port so basically where is this application on your server and how many people can sit and wait to talk to you and this is technically called the backlog or queue length how many people can wait so that's what we did right there and now that the server is set up in whenever you know by the way another thing whenever you run or build the other application the client side your program you're going you guys are going to need to know this port number so write it down on a sticky note or something don't forget it so now that we set up the server, we're going to want to stick the rest of the application. Did I say that wrong? Application. 
Oh, it's kind of hard word to say. In a while loop. Now this while loop is going to run forever, so just go ahead and stick it inside true. Now what part do we want to run forever? Well, that's pretty much the main program. And if you guys ever made like a video game or you know something in Java, you stick things in loops because this is the code that you want to run over and over and over again. So what code do you want to run over and over and over again? Well, we're going to put this, unfortunately, in a try catch statement too. So, you know, my apologies ahead of time. So what we want to do is try to do something. And if we do that wrong, then just go ahead and catch it. EOF exception, and you guys will understand what this means in a second. I just can't talk and type at the same time. Alright, so pretty much if we mess anything up, and this actually uh, isn't really messing up, it's pretty much me doing it. So, show message um, something like new line, and I know I'm not explaining any of this, but I just need to type it for server And the connection explanation point. All right. So what we're going to do is basically basically try to you know connect and have conversation with someone else. Now, once we're done having that conversation, what we're going to do is we're going to catch an error. Now it's going to view it as an error, but really, um, whenever I end the conversation, you know, I'm be like, you know what, I'm done talking to you. I either have to go make hot pockets or, you know, maybe my mom's calling me to mow the lawn. I'm going to go ahead and end the connection. And once that connection is going to end, then this message is going to pop up. And the EOF exception is, let me see if I can highlight it. It pretty much, as you can see, this pretty much explains it better than I can. Exception is mainly used by data input streams to signal end of a stream. So again, this means end of a stream or end of connection. So whenever I say, okay, you know what, I'm done running this program, the connection is going to end. Obviously, the stream that connects me and you is going to end, and this is what's going to show on your screen. Just to say, okay, you know, Bucky left, server ended the connection. Now, finally, what we want to do after all that is holy crap can't freaking type today Haas is run a method called close crap which pretty much is housekeeping stuff to signal the end of the stream close all the sockets so on and so forth so I guess I have time to uh, you know finish this right here so obviously that comment won't do the main meat of this is we're going to be running three methods and these three methods are pretty much going to be the brute of this application now the very first thing I need to do whenever this application starts running on my server is I need to wait for someone else to, to, to basically connect with me one of you guys needs to you know connect with me before I can have a conversation with someone so for that method I'm just going to call wait for connection and obviously we have to build this method later on there's no built-in method that you know does that so once someone is connected with me the first thing that we need to do is we need to set up the streams we need to set up my output stream and my input stream so I can send messages to you and I can re receive messages from you or from the client so we'll name this message set actually I think setup is one word set up streams and again this is going to set up my output and input stream now once we are connected we're going to have to run a method called while chatting and what this method is going to do is it's basically the code or the programming that allows us to send messages back and forth to each other during our chat so again essentially what this entire program is going to do is it's going to first start up and wait for someone to connect to it the next thing it's going to do is once it's connected, it's going to set up a connection or a stream between my computer and someone else's computer. And the last thing it does is when two computers are connected, then of course you want to be able to send messages back and forth to each other. So that's why I'll have to code this while chatting method and I'll show you guys how to do that. Now once I decide that I'm sick of talking to you guys, I'm going to say show message server end of the connection and this just gonna send you a message that said you know what Bucky left and close crap which is pretty much the housekeeping stuff and pretty much end the streams close the sockets all that good stuff so that's what we have to look forward to coding all of this stuff so you know I guess I will have to wait to the next tutorial so I'll see you guys then oh yeah follow me on Twitter